welcome back to my channel this is Alex of Kydie Star Astrology and this is my video for the full moon in Aquarius coming in on the 1st of August which is a Tuesday here in California however please do adjust for your current location on the planet as that time and date may change for you I what the hell even <laughs> is going on <laughs> this has been I feel like one of the more intense weeks astrologically um, that I've ever sort of experienced in a lot of ways. It's super interesting. There is a lot going on here. Um, so I'm going to try to make sense of it all for you. I won't lie, this full moon coming in it is an Aquarius full moon. It's got a square from Jupiter that's sort of supersizing it. And Aquarius rules the nervous system. And so there is just this feeling in the air. It's kind of a high voltage feeling. And I used the analogy in my Instagram of like sitting at a table and feeling the teacups rattling as this full moon approaches. I do think that the full moon is going to show us some things that we need to see, and I think that it already is. That is what Uranus energy is all about. It's kind of like getting electrocuted and having zaps of realization hit your consciousness. And Uranus in Aquarius is higher intelligence. It's sort of like the Godhead. So this is always information that in some way upgrades our perspective. So in that way, it's quite magical and it's going to bring in some much needed insights around relationships. And again, because we are so close to the full moon, that may already be occurring for some of us. But let's take a couple steps back and understand why this full moon is a little bit rattling. And that really comes when we look at the ruler, Uranus, and understand that Uranus is squaring Venus during this full moon in Aquarius. And if you've been paying attention, Venus is on quite the journey right now. She has just gone retrograde. So I'm actually going to come into right now on the 29th. We'll get to the full moon in a second. So this last week, let's talk about what the hell we have been feeling over the last few days. Uh, to be specific, I'm talking about basically like, I would say like the 26th, maybe even the 25th, 26th, 27th, coming into now the 29th. This last week has been very potent. And a lot of people I know that were initially in pre-shadow kind of like, I don't know. The retrograde's been pretty mellow. Everything's pretty good. All of a sudden this week, we're hitting me up in the DMs in my email like, what the fuck is going on? And that makes sense because the beginning of this Venus retrograde, Venus was square Jupiter, a benefic. So that's when we can feel like things are great or even thinking that things are better than they are. But then she came into the square to Uranus and things got... They, they changed. They got a little bit turbulent. And this is where lots of people might be reassessing their relationship, encountering unexpected things in their relationship. Uranus squares are like when the plane hits turbulence on a flight. That's what it feels like. And we have two more squares to Uranus on the way. So this is why I did that webinar on this Venus retrograde, because it's a very interesting journey where there's going to be plot twists. There's going to be realizations that we could not have seen coming. That is what Uranus is all about. And the more I get to know Uranus as a spirit and as an energy, he just continues to surprise me with this because I can be looking at a Uranus transit and I'm always trying to outguess him and think, I wonder what what he's going to make happen. I bet it's going to be this. I bet it's going to be that. And every freaking time he surprises me. And I'm a pretty psychic person. So that is the nature of Uranus. It's always going to startle you and awaken you to something that you did not see before. So we know that we are awakening to things we may not have expected to feel. This can be happening inside or outside. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that we are having realization. 
And for that reason, this is a very important journey that we're all on. Outside of relationships, this can be happening financially or also around Leo themes in general. And Leo is all about our expression and our confidence to be who we are uniquely in the world. And the shadow of Leo is where we can need or feel we need to seek outside validation to feel special. So we can also just be looking at sort of our solar plexus chakra in general. How confident are we right now? How much do we love ourselves? How much do we seek that validation outside of ourselves through recognition or through other people, relationships, all of that stuff? Indulgences, right? So it's a very full spectrum journey here through all of these themes. And as I said, we went through the Uranus square and then we had the nodes switch (laughs) which brought in a lot of relationship intensity. So let's talk about that for a second. As we talked about last video, the South Node is now in Libra. So for review, that means that relationships have this extra karmic intensity because as a collective, we are now, all of us, transmuting past karma through our relationships. And with Pluto squaring the South Node in Libra, these themes can be very intense and the transformative, classic death-rebirth Plutonian effect that's hitting relationships is, yeah, I mean, it's potent. And we are all looking at the North Node in Aries a different way. Who am I? Aries is about the self. It's about looking out for ourselves. It's about placing boundaries where they need to be set and upgrading the level of quality around our relationships and how we are treated within those relationships. That has a lot to do with the Aries Libra axis, which has a lot to do with sacrifice and compromise. With the North Node and Aries, Each one of us is going to find that we have a much lower threshold now for compromise and for sacrifice as each soul is pulled more towards their own personal needs. And if those are not in harmony with certain relationships, then that's going to start to come up now and is coming up now very powerfully. Pluto is going to literally force people that are sacrificing too much in a relationship to get out of that situation or to change it drastically. Pluto changes are not small changes. Um, You know, this is where the relationship has to really die and become reborn on the other side if it's going to survive. So what else made this last week intense? Well, the thing I really wanted to talk about was this right here. Um, this was really coming in like Wednesday and Thursday, 26th, 27th. And that is when Mercury crossed Venus. Holy shit balls. Did I feel that one? Uh, this was big. I mean, this really, I think, again, there was some people in my life that were like, ah, this Venus retrograde isn't that big of a deal. This part happened. And those same people were reaching out to me like, okay. All right, I'm paying attention now. And why? Well, Mercury is our mind, it's our communication. And when Mercury crossed Venus, uh, the majority of people got pulled into really thinking about and looking at whatever this very karmic Venus retrograde has brought up for them at this time. Right? I mean, there was no choice really. And then when we look at the aspects being made, I mean, this is a shit show. The majority of our malefics are making a hard aspect. Let's break it down. The most interesting to me is that Pluto and Neptune, which are almost exactly sextile, are forming a yod to Mercury and Venus. That's also known as the very faded finger of God um, rare aspect in astrology. It's basically when two outer planets, in this case, Pluto and Neptune are in what's known as a sextile. That means that both of them are forming a stress aspect known as an inconjunct, oops, or quincunx, uh, 
in this case too, are Mercury and Venus, which are on their very powerful journey of reassessment and realization as they go on their retrograde course. So this is a very sort of auspicious, otherworldly aspect that was pointing its line of fire right at Venus retrograde. And then we've got the Pluto energies, which is bringing all the stuff up from the depths. And then we've got the Neptune energies, which are a little bit confusing. And it's all pointing right at Mercury and Venus. Um, So there's a lot of people out there right now going through some very deep mental processes about this stuff. Of course, you want to look at where Venus and Mercury are hitting 28 degrees Leo. That's going to give you more information. Uh, Now, so back to the aspects, Mercury and Venus, they're still being squared by Uranus. They were squared by the moon, uh, almost opposite Saturn. I mean, it's like, come on, that day... Thursday, Venus was under fire, man. So if you have been going through a little bit of a process this week, now you know why. And this is retrograde, right? So imagine when this all moves forward, which will happen beginning of September. I do want to put out a little word of caution. Let's go look at September. Um... Right here. So where will she be? Here she is, 12 degrees. There she is, retrograde. On the third, she goes direct. Boom. Now, please take this into consideration. Uh, and we covered this extensively in the in the webinar I did. When Venus goes direct, she's going to be back square Jupiter. Now, this is where we really want to have caution because this is where she started and this is where things look better than they are and it's where we overindulge in something. That could be where, you know, where we spend too much, but it can also be where we think that a relationship is fucking great and it may not be. Um, This can also be where we go into those Leo things where we're just kind of like... Leo energy, when it gets blown up, it's a little bit gaudy. It's a little bit obnoxious, right? So it's like we don't want to go too big beginning of September when Venus stations direct. This wall of energy is going to move forward and it's going to really be magnified by Jupiter. So keep in mind that Venus is still going to square Uranus one more time. We're going to have another moment of turbulence for the last square. I haven't even gotten to the second square yet. We'll get there. Uh, this last square is going to be this last week of September. So thing, you know, we might have rose colored glasses on beginning of September is all I'm saying. Anyways. Um, so let's, let's go to the second square. Sorry. I'm, I'm kind of being like Uranus right now. I'm like hopping all over the place. Uh, I want to show you the second square to Uranus that's approaching. And that is also going to bring in our full moon themes because Uranus is the ruler of our full moon, right? So we are very much now and for the next God, week and a half or so, we are in Uranian energy, you guys. And that's pretty much starting, I would say, today because today we are about three days away from the full moon. So yeah, those teacups rattling I was talking about, that's starting. Uranus is the ruler of the full moon, and he is one of the key players in the disruptive energies of the retrograde. So this full moon is going to highlight or illuminate in the way that full moons do the Uranian component to your Venus retrograde journey. So what does that mean? Well, like I said in the beginning, probably going to be feeling, experiencing, or realizing things you may not have been expecting. But you probably need to see. Um, You might feel like the lights go on upstairs in a way where you see something differently. Then there's also the breakaway, breakthrough 
cut off energies that some may experience because of the Aquarian disruptive nature of this full moon and this next week and a half in general. That brings me to the tarot card associated with this full moon and the first decan of Aquarius, which is the Five of Swords tarot, which I'm now putting up on the screen. So this is the vibe. Look at this guy. He looks like he's had about enough here, right? The Five of Swords tarot is a card that can definitely be associated with cutting something off, walking away, detaching. There is this sense that there's been some kind of battle. If we look behind him and see all the feathers falling, there's been some kind of battle that um, doesn't really feel like it went very well. There is this feeling of almost like defeat or surrender. Um, and it can deal with like past resentments or just needing to detach from an era, a person, a situation, an energy that we are really wanting to move on from. This can be a card that brings in an energy of wanting to make amends. And I am going to definitely highlight that for this full moon being that we have to remember this is a card of cutting ties, but we are still in a Venus retrograde. So it's kind of like it's not over, but it's over. Like that's what's weird about this card is it's like, fuck you, bye. But also Venus is, st there's still a square, to two more squares to Uranus. It's going to bring in more information. So it's kind of like, oh God. Jesus. I think you kind of catch my drift. It's it's interesting how those energies are at play. So coming back here to the chart, uh, here's the full moon on the first. Uranus is squaring Venus. So this is a full moon and the days leading up to it where we can definitely be realizing things about dynamics and maybe feeling like detaching from slash going through a lot of processes about that. Then days after the full moon, going into the first week of August, watch Venus here, the closer she gets to 22 degrees, the more we feel the next turbulence moment for Venus's course. And that comes in really tight right around here, like August 7th, 8th, boom, 9th. There's the exact square. The 9th is a big day. Because that's the sun conjunct Venus day. Okay? So, yeah. Lot, lots to unpack on Venus's little journey here. Uh, I do also want to mention that Mercury is going to be coming into pre-shadow first week of August for its retrograde through Virgo. I feel like I want to talk about this in the next video. Um, what I do want to mention right now, though, is that if you are going through anything with your health, anything at all, this Mercury retrograde, which again, the pre-shadows starting first week of August, can be a really good retrograde to get some answers and to do some healing work with your health. Because retrogrades are about reassessment and getting more information. So. I will just say that now so you can feel motivated to extend yourself in that way. If you have been on a health journey, um, maybe you're frustrated and you need more answers or you want to use this retrograde to get new tests or do a detox or try a different approach, great time to do anything for the gut because uh, Virgo um, has rulership over our, our intestinal tract. Great time to do a cleanse or something like that. So I'll leave you with that and we'll do a more of a deep dive in a different video because I've I've been I've thrown a lot at you today. Um, but anyways, really interesting energies at play. Uh, I'm with you guys. I'm uh, definitely on the ride with you. May the Uranian influence bring you some insights that help you on your journey and help you to grow as a soul. 
Thank you so much for tuning in. If you are interested in booking a reading with me, I am taking appointments. You can go to my website at coyotestarastrology.com and book with me there. If you don't already follow me on Instagram, I'm putting my Instagram up there on the screen as well. You can follow me on Instagram for more astrology at earth2coyote. Thank you guys so much, and I will talk to you soon. Bye for now.